morning. It's a privilege for me to stand in front of you as the lay leader of Glenmar. Just to thank you for your work and service at Glenmar, to give you an idea of how Glenmar is involved in the community and the type of activities that we have here. Let me give you a glimpse of uh, what I did in the past week, last Saturday, a week, uh, a week ago. Saturday morning, I was here for meetings. Sunday afternoon, I was here for more meetings. <laughs> Monday night, we had more meetings. <laughs> but that's not, that's not, that was not done. Tuesday night, I had meetings. Wednesday night, I had meetings. I'm sorry for the people who had meetings on, Wednesday, uh, on Thursday and Friday. I could not make it. So just to thank you, we had those meetings just to make sure that everything works well, smoothly, works smoothly here at Glenmore, and to support the staff that are doing an excellent job. Glenmar is what it, uh, what it is because of all the people that are involved, paid or unpaid servant. I'm just representative of the unpaid servant here. And it's a privilege, a blessing to preach. I know that uh, uh, when I became a lay leader, I was told that I have to preach once. Every, once a year, so I've been preparing my sermon for years, so it, it was a little bit easy for me. <laughs> so if you don't mind, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Father, we give you thanks for this morning. We ask, O oh God, for your presence. We ask, O oh God, that you open our heart to receive the word that you have prepared for us. Oh, speak, O oh Lord, and your servants are listening. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So let me read again to provide some kind of context, the text that was read before, Let's, uh, Psalm 15. I'm going to read from the Life Recovering Bible. Psalm 15, it is written, Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hills? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. Speaking the truth for sincere heart, those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbor or speak evil of their friends, those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts, those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed or lie about the innocent, such people will stand firm forever. Amen. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, I, with a group of men, was part of a prison ministry. We were trained to visit prisons in the Washington, D.C. area, as a matter of fact, in any prison in the United States. We were visiting prison, communicating with prisoners all over the United States. And one particular facility in the Washington, D.C. area, we had a, week, uh, a monthly worship service. At the beginning of each service, we were asking inmates to share whatever they had in their heart. We had a time what we call praise and testimonies. In one of those occasions, an inmate, an inmate stood up and read Psalm 15, the one that I just read. His reading caught my attention. I was surprised and puzzled. I could not understand why he chose to read such a scripture, given his situation. Being a prisoner as a result of his wrongdoing. It was difficult for me to recon reconcile his predicament with the text he read. If someone was worthy to dwell on God's holy hill, it was not him I thought. Basically, based on the text, I say he was not qualified to read such a text. I could not look beyond, I could not look at that image beyond the context he was in. I was judgmental. I had doubt that anything meaningful was going in his life. However, I quickly realized that according to God's standards, we all fall short myself included. Something special was more likely happening inside him that I did not know. Let me suggest that perhaps he clearly knew that he was not blameless. 
Perhaps he has already contacted the people he offended and asked for forgiveness. Perhaps he confessed his sin to the Lord and deeply believed that all his wrongs were completely gone. Perhaps he strongly embraced God's love and considered himself worthy to abide in God's temple. He was not ashamed to stand in front of all the other inmates, in front of the people like me coming from the outside, to share, to tell about God's goodness in his life. Though he was in prison, he simply felt accepted by God. There are times in our lives where it's difficult to feel accepted by God, let alone accepted by people around us. God is close and available to us, but we feel that God is distant and unreachable. We cannot pass our failure. We struggle to see beyond our, the abuses and hurt we are subjected to. Our anger, shame, and disappointment cause our spiritual vision to be blurred. Does it prevent us from seeing God's unconditional love and readiness to welcome at any time? Have you been the victim of a situation that constantly brings you grief? Do you think that no one understands or is able to comfort you? Do you believe that things around you are so dysfunctional that you cannot stand in God's holy presence and accept God's grace? Have you been sick so long? Or do you believe that you have a wounded soul because you are depressed? Perhaps you wonder when your distress will end, if God cares, or even if God cares for you. Have you done something you want no one to know about? Do you think that if someone becomes aware of it, you'll be unworthy to come to God's temple? Do you feel that your soul, your soul is covered with ashes? The good news is that through Jesus, God, God came down on, her, on earth to deliver us from whatever situation we are in. In the book of Hebrew, it is written there that Jesus sympathizes with our weaknesses. God understands our sorrow, our disappointment, and our shame. There is no abuse, no hurt, too hard for God to heal or to mend. In the book of John, the first book of John, chapter 1, verse 9, God's right. God promised that if we, we confess our shortcomings, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And to confess our sins is more than say, I'm sorry. It is the process whereby we acknowledge our fault, take full responsibility, and let God's power lead us to the process of restoration. When we do that, we experience God's grace and love in a special way. God knows about everything we have done. God knows our situation. The only thing we need to do is to cry out to God. We need to look to God, and God will surely be gracious to us at the sound of our cry. So when you turn to God, God accepts you. Let me break down a little bit the concept of acceptance by God. I'm going to raise three points. The first one, to be accepted is coming to a place where you realize that what Christ did at the cross is enough to remove any shame, any guilt, any fear, any disappointment, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1, it is written there, there is no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. The second point I want to raise, your acceptance, your acceptance by God is based on your identity in Christ. It does not matter what other people say about you or how they label you. The most important is what, how God calls you. Let me give you a couple of names that God calls you. He calls you redeemed, blessed, beloved, precious, the masterpiece of God, highly favored, the righteousness of God. If people around you remind you of your past, or the poor choices you made, or the things you were exposed to, 
you can boldly stand up and say, the old you is gone, and that you have a new identity in Christ. And you can even add to that, you are a work in progress. The last point I want to raise, to be accepted by God, is not a license to do wrong, but it's a freedom to honor God in whatever you do because of the grace you have received. You are filled with a spirit of gratitude that inspires and motivates you to follow Christ. I do not know about you, but every time I wake up in the morning, or every time I go to bed at night, every time I have the privilege to come in its place, I feel redeemed, accepted by God, accepted by the one who calls me by my name and reminds me day after day that my sins are forgiven. Nothing I have ever done and nothing that has ever happened to me prevent me from coming into God's presence. I feel worthy to stand up this morning and worship God. I'm not ashamed to lift up my voice and praise God's name. It's not because of my own righteousness. It's only because what Christ did at the cross for me. Now understand better why the inmate I refer to was so excited to read Psalm, 1, Psalm 15. He was convinced that no prison wall or no circumstances could take away God's grace over his life. What about you? Do you feel accepted by God? Do you feel redeemed? Are your past experiences roadblock, roadblock that prevent you from fully embracing God's love? Come to, come to God as you are. God will restore you. Come and let the blood of Jesus wash away any pain, any hurt, any grudge, any anger, any lie, any, any disappointment, any, any load that you have been carrying for a long time. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we come to you as we are. Asking you, oh God, just to remove anything, oh God, in our lives that prevent us from being accepted by you for being redeemed. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.